except the tooling is slightly different. So, I'm at, out of my interest, uh, I, I would like to see a show of hands. How many of you guys have used containers? Okay, with LXC or something? Docker perhaps? Okay, so uh, Docker seems to be nowadays the default technology actually uh, as far as uh, containers, uh, containers are concerned. Um, it uh, turned out, uh, uh, for me this uh, NSPON uh, was actually a discovery a few months ago and uh, I thought, well, that's uh, quite neat. This is something that I can relate to and I don't need any uh, dependencies, any tools installed on the system. Um, it is uh, also often called uh, the change route on stero steroids. So change route, I'm sure that may, uh, everyone in this room is familiar with change route, have been around for a couple of decades already in the Unix slash uh, Linux uh, uh, world. And uh, we're using some technologies from uh, like uh, uh, kernel C groups. Um, it is uh, actually evolving into a very nice uh, container. Uh, technology as well. So, uh, what I would like to do today, I believe I have uh, uh, 60 minutes for the presentation. Gentlemen in the back, yes? Okay. So that I can time myself. Um, I will be uh, starting off right off the bat with an uh, example and unfortunately for that I I'll grab a chair but I need to be sitting with my back towards you so I hope you uh, guys don't get offended. After that, I will be talking a bit about what is uh, SystemD and more specifically uh, SystemD and Spawn. That's a uh, utility in the SystemD uh, family of the tools. After that, um, about uh, bootable containers, I will be showing a uh, container using uh, OpenSUSE. So containers, you can, you can run applications in containers, but you can also in fact run uh, complete uh, machines, so with, a, with an init uh, and st stuff like that. And uh, for those of you who ha uh, didn't know, uh, it is possible to uh, run multiple uh, distributions on the same system. There are, there are some gotchas and there, is, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind, but uh, I will be showing you as an example how to run uh, a CentOS distribution uh, in a container on OpenSUSE. Um, I will be mentioning something about uh, kernel C groups and uh, the last uh, bullet unfortunately is, is not working so I do have a service but is not yet socket activated and what that exactly means I will be also elaborating on in my presentation. So an, an example uh, system the uh, Anspawn container. And, it, it is, will be interesting to see how this works. Can you guys hear me? I uh, feel, feel like a bit uh, Stevie Wonder, you know, the, the, the keyboard and... Uh, anyway, without, without the music actually, so... Is uh, this font size uh, suitable for you guys? Yeah? Okay. So I have a container, SRV containers. I have a few containers, in fact, uh, in this directory. And uh, I will be using a uh, OpenSUSE, uh, OpenSUSE. So as you can see, this is, looks like uh, very, uh, as if it was a system, right? A root file system. So, just to go back to my... Uh, uh, and spawn... Yeah. So the, uh, with the system, the end spawn, I can uh, start off the, the, the container. Um, if I would start it like this, then it will, would actually use the uh, uh, system, the inside the container. So I would have a, a fully bootable container which will be the, se the uh, step after this. But, uh, you know, just uh, to start off a bash. Um, that, that's not... 
Okay, that this uh, password. So that was not actually my intention. I want, as you can, as you, can you could see, uh, this was a actually a boot process. So I need uh, to uh, check what uh, what happened. But uh, uh, nonetheless, at this point, I'm in, inside of a container. Uh, so let's examine what is happening on the on the system. So inside the container, I can do a PS, and this would uh, look like a normal uh, system. Uh, Except that this uh, system is running as a container on uh, the uh, uh, on this machine, and as you can see, this is the name of the container. And uh, yeah, it, it's uh, starting. Uh, Systemd has also a couple of very nice tools, like uh, the C group list. This will show me uh, the structure that uh, Systemd has uh, set up, and uh, besides processes. Systemd can also, with uh, Systemd and Spawn, also can um, uh, also can uh, uh, start, in fact, uh, machines or containers. And um, we can see this uh, Systemd uh, will build a, uh, a hierarchy of uh, C groups, and uh, they will be listed underneath the machine that slides. And as you can see, there is the, my uh, container that I just uh, started, and within it, a couple of uh, processes. So, and otherwise, uh, it's a normal system, as you can see. So, more on this, uh, this later. And I can just shut down the container with uh, normal in it. Okay. I'm just uh, curious what uh, what went wrong in the in the here. This should have. Oh, this was the problem. Uh, the uh, slash b uh, dash b uh, instructs uh, system D to boot the container. Okay, so if I with the with the J, I have now a, just a bash process inside the container. And this is this is the difference. So this would be equal to a uh, system in when you when you start a a, a system, uh, and on the uh, the boot prompt you uh, add the parameters in it is being bash, right? This is the exact same situation. So that this could be a rescue shell or whatever. And the same applies that. Uh, uh, the container has been started. It's just that uh, not a complete uh, system situation, but uh, just a, uh, a, a single process inside that container. While in the previous situation there was a, uh, a number of processes which uh, system D started inside the container, now I only have a bash process. Okay. So. Uh, there's also interesting stuff that um, inside this container, this is inside the, you can see that uh, I'm in the container because of the, uh, the machine now, uh, name, okay? So my, uh, this is the name of my machine, uh, that, that's uh, Dorado, and the container is called uh, OpenSUSE 13.2. Uh, and if, uh, suppose that I want to add uh, some uh, program in, I, ca I cannot do that because there is no zipper stack installed inside the container. So as you can see, this is really a, a lightweight uh, uh, stuff. In certain, uh, in certain view, it acts as a machine, but it's not a completely, it's not a, a fully full-blown machine. Okay. But if I would go to, uh, uh, for example, this is the, uh, this is the. Uh, just to show you guys how I would go about uh, to install a uh, some kind of a utility or a package inside the container, then I could do, uh, do this. Uh, must be absolute. Ah, oh, damn.
Okay, but uh, wget is already installed inside the container. Okay, so uh, this was just to get started on the uh, containers. If I would, uh, would you guys be interested to know how to build a container like this? So that's actually, yeah, the, the answer is supposed to be yes, right? Okay, so uh, let me let me show uh, show that. So the, uh, I'm not sure how. Unfortunately, it's a bit uh, too small the the letters, but uh, I will be uh, doing that uh, here as well. So I will be starting a fresh install. For example, make the uh, open SUSE um, Let's call it OS 13. Uh, I, ha I have it already. Uh, make dear OS, as in OpenSUSE, right? So, what I can do is zipper, and I need to check the exact uh, syntax, root OS, and then uh, add repo. And I need to, fortunately, I'm, hopefully, I'm not confusing you with uh, switching back and forth too much with the. Uh, okay, so I basically what I did, I just uh, copied the URL from the PDF that uh, would save some time for me, and then I will be naming this OSS. Root or, uh, okay. Yeah, I know. I know. I need to append the um, SRV containers OS. Okay. So what it did now is, if we um, look into OS, I haven't uh, shown that before, but uh, since I've just created the directory, I'm assuming that you guys believe me that it was a completely empty directory. So the, what Zipper did actually created a uh, RPM database and uh, added a, a repository uh, with, that, uh, with that URL. Uh, I also want to add the non-OSS repo. Like that. And uh, what I can do now is just uh, Instead of, uh, I, I have a couple of repositories now, and I can install just uh, a couple of uh, packages. What I need to make sure is that a number of packages will be included in, uh, in this container. For example, I will be needing this uh, OpenSUSE release 13.2 package, which will uh, pull in a couple of uh, you know, uh, standard uh, system directories and, and, and uh, files. And uh, also, it has uh, dependencies on, uh, on uh, you know, the basic libraries. So, as you can see, this is my uh, command line. I'm pointing to the uh, uh, root of the container. I'm uh, telling Zipper to install a number of packages, and these are the packages that it will be installing. So, um, unfortunately, there is some network issue. Allow me to uh, sort that out just very quickly. Well, unfortunately, there is something with uh, with the uh, with the wire. Oh, this would help. Unfortunately, uh, I, while handling the laptop, I uh, killed the wireless. Uh, so the switch was uh, in the off position. Okay. So retry. <coughs> Obviously, I need to add uh, the uh, uh, the GPG signing keys for the for the packages. So I'll just say, uh, uh, do you trust this temporary or always? I will be trusting this always. 
And for those of you who are familiar with uh, OpenSUSE, uh, this is now actually the installation process. It, it uh, will uh, download the uh, uh, repository metadata, it will uh, put it over there, resolve the dependencies, and it uh, prompts me that, uh, uh, okay, in order for those packages to get to be installed, you need to be uh, you need to accept these other dependencies. So I'm saying, okay, this is quite standard. And as you can see, uh, this is now the installation process. Okay? And at the end of this installation process, which I won't be uh, waiting for, uh, I basically will have a freshly installed uh, container with a, a freshly installed OpenSUSE 13.2 inside of the container. Please. Uh, not, not the way I'm doing it uh, right now. So if I, uh, there are there are a number of ways to achieve that. For example, I could be using a proxy, a caching proxy, or um, I could be using also a local directory, for for example, for the for the DVD. But you know, for just for the uh, simplicity's sake, I'm actually using the uh, uh, the, the online repositories. I could also loop mount a uh, a, a, a ISO. With the, with, the, with, with OpenSUSE and use that as an installation source. Okay? Any other? I'm sorry, I, we, it's, it's, it's horribly... Uh, configuration files, uh, I, just to, uh, repeating the question for the recording, the question is, uh, do you need any configuration files? Is that correct? No, uh, you don't. You can have use config files for the containers, for the different stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, basically you could just script this. You could, you could put this in the, into a script and have it, uh, uh, you know, use... use uh, I'm not sure in what, uh, what context you mean the configuration files. No, this, this doesn't need any configuration files so far. Yeah? Okay. So this is happily chugging along. Uh, uh, actually, I will be stopping this. I'm, I won't be using this uh, uh, this container because I already have a, a, a container and this one is actually using my mobile uh, uh, plan. So. So as you can see, with a, a few simple uh, instructions, you can have you can build a, uh, a freshly installed uh, 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 image for for a container. And if you uh, obviously, if you, there is a certain uh, a minimum that you need to install, for example, the uh, uh, OpenSUSE release in this case, uh, but it, I could just have uh, selected Bash after that and have a very lightweight container. And in terms of uh, patch management, uh, this is uh, of course uh, very uh, very favorable that you don't have a fully full blown uh, operating system. Obviously, there is also no kernel inside the, the container. Is that uh, just to make it explicit? So can you tell that directory up and share uh, Your question is: Can I can I go to the directory and and uh, and share that uh, on the network? No. You share. You could, you could, or you know whatever. You could uh, basically uh, you, you could uh, tar that up, and, and uh, in, in terms of uh, you know uh, doing multiple uh, deployments, yes, obviously. You could also there is also uh, nowadays uh, a uh, uh, people are looking at how to uh, you know um, wisely use butterfs uh, subvolumes combined with containers. So obviously that's uh, that's also very interesting because there are the the uh, uh, you need to only uh, install the files or the content once and after that uh, you can have very lightweight in, also in terms of uh, storage uh, you could have 
with just one content in terms of the root file system, you could have 10 or dozen, two dozens of these, uh, these containers on the same machine. So, after this, uh, you know, after wetting your appetite for uh, systemd and spawn, uh, let's talk about systemd for uh, ju just a minute. And uh, I will uh, stand up a bit. How many of you have used systemd? How many of you liked systemd? Uh, Craig is not sure. <laughs> so I must admit, uh, 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 around 10 months ago, maybe a year ago, you know, when, when systemd started to, to uh, get into the, into the main line, uh, I was looking at the reactions and uh, I was quite surprised. Uh, actually what surprised me is the ferocity of, the, of uh, some of those uh, reactions. And so obviously I was uh, quite curious. And, uh, you know, I started, uh, okay, let's see what this is. But uh, quite uh, re uh, quickly, I became a fan for Systemd. So, yay, Systemd. Okay. So, what, what is it? Uh, obviously, many of you know as, a, uh, uh, as the uh, successor of the old uh, Sysv init package. And the, uh, to others, it's the... Uh, 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 the core of evil uh, in, in, the, in the Linux uh, world. Uh, basically, it will replace initd, I think. Um, and uh, it's, it's a system and session manager for Linux. And what that means is that uh, uh, right after, in, in the boot process, that the kernel has started, the init, uh, init, uh, initial RAM disk is mounted, then the kernel will start off the uh, first process, PID1, and that used to be init, and nowadays it's uh, systemd. And systemd is in charge of uh, you know, furnishing the complete system uh, until it, uh, the boot process is, is ready. So hence the system and session manager. It will uh, start uh, uh, services, it will start uh, uh, devices nowadays, and the, uh, the, the features of uh, systemd are ever growing. Um, what actually for me sets up systemd sets up uh, what actually sets apart uh, systemd for me is the uh, uh, are two things one of them is that uh, uh, we will be uh, doing away with the uh, uh, old uh, shell scripts and uh, if you ask me that uh, i won't be missing them uh, the shell scripts uh, being that have been used for 30 something years in in uh, unix and linux uh, yeah, they had, uh, they had their issues, I would say. So, just uh, out of curiosity, how many, uh, what would you think how big a typical shell script, in, for example, in SUSE is, and in its uh, shell script? Uh, 100 lines? Including functions? That's exactly, that's a very good question. So, uh, what I'm here, uh, including all the includes, right? Because you can have a init script uh, in, I don't know, 20, 40 lines, but you start up with including a couple of uh, other functions. So, I, actually, I haven't uh, uh, counted all the uh, uh, with the includes included, but um, I had a look at the NFS init script. How many of you have lo had look at that? It's 500 lines. So, and what systemd actually brings uh, uh, to the table is that uh, systemd does away with uh, the prescriptive way of uh, starting a system. And it uh, changes to a descriptive. So instead of a prescriptive, you need to do this, you need to do that, uh, this and that. Uh, that's how the, you know, the, the shell scripts used to do. Uh, with systemd, you describe the, the service. So it's a descriptive method. Okay? And what, uh, that makes that it's uh, the unit files where the, all the services and, and other things are uh, described uh, is a very uh, readable and actually quite rich syntax. 
but you don't actually do boilerplate for example to check whether or not the process is running or is there a file or a logging whatever all this boilerplate thing uh, is being done by systemd the other uh, very nice feature as far as i'm concerned is the uh, uh, very aggressive uh, parallelization of the processes so uh, i'm sure that you guys uh, familiar with th that uh, uh, init the old init did things sequentially well mostly okay there there were some tricks which would uh, which would made appear that there were there are multiple things happening at the same time but in in reality init is a single threaded uh, uh, th thing and uh, this is uh, this uh, uh, especially shows during the boot up now i'm i'm familiar with the counter argument that uh, okay i have a server i'm running uh, servers and i don't need uh, to boot them on a regular basis so i don't care that uh, instead of uh, 20 seconds it uh, spends an additional four minutes once every few months okay but uh, i think that uh, in terms of the um, what it does with the, uh, the uh, instead of the descriptive uh, feature of it is actually still very nice also for on, on servers so uh, there is the other uh, there's also uh, the on-demand starting of services and uh, uh, this topic what i'm uh, uh, you know this uh, containers this is very much related also to that uh, to that point i have been uh, watching a uh, uh, presentation from someone i think it's uh, at a hosting company and they are running 2000 containers on a single system all, all of them with nginx happens to be a hosting provider okay but the the point is uh, while there are 2000 containers and websites available at the same time on, on that machine usually no, not all 2000 of them are running at the same time so this uh, uh, on-demand uh, starting ser uh, of services is uh, very useful in uh, certain use cases also a, uh, I would say uh, I would say one of the cherries of, on, on top of the pie is that uh, systemd keeps track of the uh, of the processes that um, have been started by uh, by services um, how many of you had uh, the situation that uh, you were looking at a process and you were wondering how the hell who, uh, how is that uh, what process is that who started it so with systemd uh, with systemd uh, it is uh, very easy because uh, all services and all the child processes will be running in their own C group. And, and that's almost like a container, but uh, not, not quite. So it, uh, uh, with uh, using this, it is always explicit which process is uh, be, uh, belonging to what service. Okay. So besides that, uh, system D does obey also with the run levels run levels are gone um, it instead of that uh, systemd has uh, targets and you know if you're really loose on the interpretation then you could say that run levels are sort of uh, like the, the, tar uh, the targets but it's not exactly true because uh, in, in the traditional init you only ever can have one run level at the same time and with systemd there is a whole hierarchy of targets that you can uh, that you can have uh, as i mentioned uh, besides services systemd also does uh, other stuff for example mounts and um, uh, it basically similar to uh, quite similar to packaging where with dependencies you can describe uh, dependencies between uh, between uh, packages with systemd you can describe dependencies between services so that's also uh, very uh, very useful and uh, to uh, i would like to mention this one it's also capable to uh, uh, act as a drop-in replacement for sysv init in fact i previously mentioned the nfs uh, service and uh, on OpenSUSE 13.2 happened and also on, on uh, slash 12 
it happens to be the same old uh, NFS script uh, containing 500 lines of scripting and including another 2000 but uh, NFS is still started uh, with, uh, with the old script so there is also um, quite some uh, criticism regarding systemd and uh, uh, obviously I won't be addressing those that's uh, up to you to, to read up on, uh, online And as an aside regarding the, the criticism, actually I, haven't, uh, I have been following this topic for a few months now and uh, what, what, what occurred to me uh, is that uh, I haven't really seen an argument that is based on, uh, on actual knowledge about uh, systemd uh, or, or uh, that has to be really a showstopper. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, and it, took, it, it occurred to me as well that uh, the, the situation with, uh, uh, with Henry Ford and this, this quote of him is that, uh, you know, if Henry Ford would ask the other people that, that these are his, his words uh, about how to, how to build or what to build, then you, they would have said, okay, uh, you need to uh, build uh, faster uh, carriages. Oh. I did, I did this presentation before and I just now realized this was obviously not the, um, uh, this uh, in, instead of horses, it's supposed to uh, say carriages. Yes? I'm really having trouble following you, uh, uh, Apollo. Yeah, that you mean you mean like uh, it's it's a monolithic application. So uh, you know, I ha I, I had a look at uh, at, at that, and, and you know, I'm I'm not really sure that what what uh, how to to handle that uh, that uh, criticism. So obviously, it's it's a uh, it's more than one utility, but it's not a monolithic something. So there are these are these are uh, uh, utility. Yeah, it does. <coughs> yeah. I guess I guess I am uh, that there might might be some tr uh, kernel of the truth in in that argument, and uh, you know I would say that uh, being uh, an open source project, uh, in time probably uh, people will pick up on on the you know the the stuff that is really needed in terms of security. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, system D adoption. Uh, this is just a list, a uh, recent list, I think a few weeks ago I, I checked uh, on uh, Wikipedia just how uh, other distributions are uh, related to, uh, 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 to systemd. I'm not sure, is the Debian already... The, is it with systemd or not? Yeah, okay, so I need, I need, to, I need to update uh, the, those slides. So Debian, uh, Debian is also now using uh, systemd. So, I've already shown you guys uh, bootable containers. Um, so I um, guess I'm, I don't. I'm just checking what uh, what other examples I have here. Install yum. Yeah. How about uh, creating a uh, container with uh, CentOS in it? Sounds good. Answer answer is still supposed to be yes. yes. Okay. So, um, I, I already have installed uh, YUM on, uh, on uh, OpenSUSE. So let's create another directory. I already have a couple of those, so uh, I need to uh, be creative uh, regarding the naming. Uh, so, uh, what I need to do is uh, manually create a uh, RPM database, like that. So with RPM I'm creating a database uh, and unfortunately, oh, I just, uh, I just nuked my previous container, at least in terms of uh, RPMs. <laughs> 
Okay, let me let me see. I need to. Uh, so find send. Just an RPM database, and then. Uh, I need to create oh, damn it's not not really helpful uh, copy so, uh, and not Santos, but it will be sent. Uh, I need to install something, and this is actually the uh, the URL to the uh, This is really awkward. I apologize for these guys that uh, uh, also you know in this in this position it's not uh, also not the best uh, Santos, send Santos dash, and then this one. Okay, now it seems that I have a complete command line. Okay, so let's see. Now I have uh, a couple of uh, repositories also for uh, for Santos. And now I need to install uh, some packages. Install root send like that. So this should do it. As you can see, Yum is uh, uh, picking up uh, the uh, the meta information, the repository information, and that basically just another installation process. What kind of? Um, actually, uh, so the question is, what kind of resources do you have available for the uh, default container? There is no limit currently, but you can uh, you can uh, put uh, uh, limits on the uh, on the number, uh, for example, CPUs, CPU pinning, and all of these you can do that using uh, uh, kernel C groups. Okay. So while this is going along. So I'm, I'm I'm quite sure that you guys believe me that this will be this will be uh, delivering a um, an operating system image, except it now it's uh, with uh, CentOS. I happen to have already a couple of uh, CentOS uh, uh, images, so why don't I just start up a uh, container and I will be booting instead of uh, OpenSUSE. Let's use uh, CentOS 7. And you guys, you can see that uh, it's almost uh, instantaneous. So the, uh, the uh, boot time is very short. And I just happen to have a word. As you can see, this is a, a CentOS 7. And uh, let's see, is uh, uh, what's what's uh, what's that? Update. So it's a it's a basically a working uh, software management uh, stack as well. Uh, the, usually, Yum takes a bit longer than than, than Zipper. Yes. Which part 
system, systemd and spawn is the utility that actually uh, creates the, the container and uh, uh, also because um, uh, I, I won't be doing this uh, let me see mount so as you can see there are a couple of mounts here and uh, most notably you will need a proc file system uh, you will need uh, some kind of a dev file system. So all these uh, all these mounts will be done by the uh, systemd and spawn utility while build, building up the container. Yes, question. Networking. Very good question. Uh, that was that would have been one of my follow uh, next uh, topic actually. But uh, let's see. So do I have a network? I don't have a an IP. Uh, stack so let's uh, you know I, I, I go back to OpenSUSE I'm a bit more familiar with, uh, with OpenSUSE in this regard I'm, and a bit uh, by the way uh, this was just the, the way how to ex uh, exit from a, uh, um, a running container which happens to be the uh, um, you know the uh, uh, control and then the uh, squ square bracket uh, closing three times in a row, and uh, and system the end spawn will exit the container. I also could have uh, uh, could have said uh, machine CTL. Uh, let's see, help uh, terminate and the the container name, but uh, I just uh, did it another way. So at this point, I don't I don't have any containers running. Your question was about. Uh, how about networking inside the container? So let's see. Instead of uh, op uh, CentOS, I will be using OpenSUSE. What happened uh, here? Root. So as you can see, uh, and you need, you need to take my word for it, but this is the exact same output as uh, would be on, a, on my... So this is my uh, physical machine. And you know, let's see, quite similar, isn't it? So I have, uh, I have the same networking stack available uh, by default on the container. I can do, uh, uh, th there is a system, the end spawn has have, uh, uh, a number of uh, capabilities in terms of, you know, uh, allowing, not allowing uh, interfaces. You can put a, 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 a like a tune, t uh, tune, tune tap device on, the, on the, uh, the container. So you are, you, you have quite uh, some tools to deal with, uh, with networking. And from inside the container, obviously, I can do, for example, a. Uh, okay, ping is not uh, hap doesn't happen to be installed, so let me see. Uh, there is no zipper. But uh, you need uh, t take my word for it. You, you can ha uh, you have access uh, during the um, initialization of the container. Uh, systemd and spawn by default actually also copies the slash etsy uh, resolve.conf file. So you also have DNS resolving inside the container. But you can give your yes all of the connection. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, basically you could also, you, you know, uh, in, in that regard you need to tell to uh, uh, systemd and spawn. Uh, don't use the default uh, uh, networking interfaces of the of the host, but uh, you know you, you will be using, for example, a a, a ToonTap uh, uh, device or interface. Okay, and with bridging or routing, you have uh, you have all the networking capabilities that you want. Yeah. So. And uh, let me just uh, start this up uh, again and just show machine CTL. Uh, this is my container running and uh, uh, status OpenSUSE 13.2. And uh, this is, uh, here you can see the, uh, the process is running inside the, the container. 
and this is really just a regular um, layout of uh, system D. So, um, yeah, but uh, also other niceties like uh, if I log into the uh, uh, the container host name CTL. It will uh, show you. Uh, it will show me the. Uh, this is my host name, and it uh, it is a uh, container. Uh, it happens to have a particular ID. What kind of virtualization technology I'm using? What operating system am I using? And the architecture. So. As I mentioned, uh, I could shut down the, the container by typing control and then uh, square, square bracket, bracket closing three times in a row, or I can just say init zero, and uh, uh, now my container has uh, uh, basically shut down. Or I also could have used the uh, machine CTL terminate. So there are there are a number of ways to, to deal with uh, uh, with these containers. This was uh, the uh, the networking part, and uh, there is also the possibility to integrate the the journal of the uh, container with the host system. Enter. It has the same IP. Yes. No, because I'm using the same interface. Uh, let's let's uh, let's show. So I'm inside the container, and uh, so these are these are basically the same interfaces. That I have on my host uh, system, but you can uh, you can instruct Nspan the uh, to uh, you know not to uh, pass on all the uh, interfaces by uh, which it does by default. So how would you get your the same, the same way that you do with other virtualization technologies. So you, 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 you are using, you use a, 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 a ToonTap interface, and you can use bridging on, uh, on the host. You can, you can use uh, uh, masquerading stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, that might be, that might be interesting. Um, let me uh, shut, shut off the container again. And now I'll try to, what's the exact, uh, copy, so now it's a uh, journal CTL min F, I'm not sure that maybe there is a um, issue here, uh, let me see, link journal host, Okay. There's also some unexpected uh, again here. Uh, anyway, so I'm moving on. So uh, it, it, it's uh, obvious now that you can you can do this uh, manually, uh, but how about having containers run like services? And it uh, just so happens that uh, you can you can integrate uh, the uh, uh, the, con the container with uh, with systemd and have uh, systemd uh, in, uh, started up at at, uh, at uh, during boot. And for that, we need to create a, uh, a unit file for uh, for systemd. I just happen to have already one of those, so I just uh, get out here. And let me show you system and then open SUSE service. 
So this is a unit, a system the unit file for those of you who never seen one before. And uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, mandatory uh, sections inside of this file. Uh, and this is actually one of the, uh, the ones that describes the, how to, the, the, the service, how to start uh, the service. And it, uh, the service happens to be a container now. Okay? So I will be using the, the same uh, uh, utility, uh, the tools as, as before manually, except it's, uh, it's done, done, uh, uh, it will be started with, uh, uh, by systemd, by default. So let me see, systemctl status, and then open SUSE 13 to container zero. As you can see, it's not, uh, it's not running. What we can see here uh, on top is that uh, uh, systemd lets us know that, okay, this, is, uh, this service uh, has uh, this particular description. It is loaded from that, uh, from that location. It is currently disabled. And disabled uh, means that uh, you can start the, con uh, the service, but uh, systemd won't start it automatically during boot. Okay? So if I would want to start it, I could do that right, uh, right now uh, like this, or I can enable it first and then have uh, system status and it's, it's enabled now. Um, and I can just uh, start it up. And by now, mm, okay, status, okay, failure, what's, uh, what's happening here? Uh, Could not terminate, no machine, open SUSE C0. Sorry? Fail to remove the directory not empty. Okay. Um, maybe is that because I tried uh, the, uh, the journal integration before, I'm not sure, but uh, let's uh, try to remove that. I don't need those. Okay. So it, it appears to be running. And with machine CTL, it shows up as a, the, the container. And basically, I have, I have it uh, uh, over there. So as you can see, uh, I, and, and you know how this will be started is defined by the, uh, uh, the unit file. And it will be uh, started as part of the machine target, which is one of the built-in targets for, uh, for systemd. Okay. Now, it's, it's also interesting that uh, how would you uh, suppose, uh, in this case, my container contains, uh, has actual runtime uh, environment, but suppose I'm running an Apache server and nothing else inside of the container. So how, uh, how is uh, debugging uh, being done? Uh, how can you verify what's, uh, uh, how things look like from inside the container? And for that, there happens to be a very useful uh, uh, utility, which is the NSEnter uh, utility. So using this uh, utility, I can uh, step inside the container and, uh, you know, uh, have... Yeah, question? Namespace. Yeah. So, let me find out the uh, exact syntax because this is also so. Uh, I'll copy it first and then uh, elaborate on the uh, on the uh, switches in just a moment. Uh, machine CTL status. I need to have the uh, the PID of the container. 
and this is the pit. goes wrong here is this one and it's not that bit but uh, 3455 so what I'm what I'm instructing NS Enter to do is to I, I want to step inside the namespace of that process which I'm I, uh, identifying it on on the command line and I want uh, NS Enter to, to mount all the necessary uh, mounts that the, the container uh, has. So, for example, uh, uh, yeah, uh, network uh, pit, uh, stuff like that. And right now, as you can see, I'm inside the container and I can do PS, uh, stuff like that. And uh, th this is uh, uh, so. Th this is inside also the the uh, uh, root directory or the root file system of the of the container itself. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, this container happens to have a runtime a runtime environment with shells uh, stuff like that. But uh, not necessarily all of the uh, the containers that you want to have will be uh, furnished with those uh, tools. Okay. And using NS Enter, you can just uh, enter the. Um, uh, in, you can just uh, well step into the container and uh, and look from the uh, to the outside from the uh, uh, from the container. Okay. I think that I'm uh, exactly on, on on time in terms of uh, uh, the presentation. Are there any other burning questions? When you they will be available. Uh, I, I don't know what the mechanism is uh, for uh, the organizers to distribute, but uh, if you just uh, drop me an email uh, and that changed. This is the, the, that's, that's my email. Uh, if, you, if you would like to, and I'm, I, I will be also publishing this, these slides on the SlideShare. So, okay. Any other questions? Uh, is, uh, the question is, is, is a user uh, capable of starting a container? I would say no. Because you need, you need, to, you need to bind mount uh, a couple of directories and uh, as a user you cannot necessarily do that. Yeah? Okay. Any other questions? Then uh, thank a, thanks a lot for your attention and bearing with me during, uh, with, and, and helping out with uh, troubleshooting the environment. Thank you.